Today we'll be going through how to install Ubuntu 22.04 long-term support on a storage disk of your choice. We'll first start out by downloading it, then I'll show you how to flash that image onto a disk. We'll boot that disk, and then I'll show you how to install Ubuntu on a computer of your choice. First off, we'll want to go to the ubuntu.com website. I'll put a link in the description below, and you'll go to the downloads section where you'll select the latest and greatest of Ubuntu desktop by clicking Ubuntu desktop, scrolling down until you see Ubuntu 22.04 LTS, then you'll hit the download button. After hitting the download button, the download will automatically begin. Make sure to save the image wherever you want. You'll notice that it's called Ubuntu 22.04 desktop edition, the AMD 64 bit architecture for a 64 bit processor. We'll hit save and let the download finish. Now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to launch and use the Belena Atcher app in order to flash the image onto a USB, CD, or DVD of my choice. First, I'll select the image that I just got done downloading. Notice I have Ubuntu 22.04 desktop AMD 64 here. I'll select that and hit open. Next, I'm going to select which USB, CD, or DVD I want to flash the image onto. If you already have a device in, it might be auto-selected. Therefore, make sure to take a look and select the proper storage device where you want to flash the image onto. Otherwise, whatever disk is selected, it will be erased entirely so that the install image can go onto it. I only have the one USB currently in my computer, so that's why it's selected by default. I'll make sure that the green check mark's good and hit continue. Now, before you hit flash, again, make sure you have the proper storage device selected. And once you're confident, you can click flash. Belena Etcher will now ask you for administrative privileges. Hit yes to start the flashing process. And after the flashing process is done, we're going to take this USB CD or DVD over to the computer where we want to install Ubuntu 22.04 onto and insert it into that computer. Then we're going to load up our BIOS so we can move some stuff around in our boot priority so that this USB CD or DVD is the first to boot. I'll show you how to do it at least through my computer and my BIOS setup. And when the flash is completed successfully, you'll get this page here. And now you're ready to take the USB CD or DVD over to the computer you want to install Ubuntu 22.04 on. I'll meet you over there. And on my computer, when it's first loading up, it's going to ask whether I want to boot in a BIOS. The key for my BIOS is F2 or the delete key. Yours might be something different in order to get in a BIOS. Make sure to look it up for your particular motherboard or computer. So since mine is a newer UEFI based BIOS, yours might be different, but I can use the mouse and mine, making it a little more convenient. What we're looking for is to change up the boot priority. Conveniently enough for me, it's available here on the right hand side. So I can look through and try finding the USB that I just got done flashing on, but it doesn't seem to be in one of the top four here. So I can either click the boot menu option F8, but let's go to the advanced mode for me, F7, because this might be what your BIOS more closely resembles. On mine, I have tabs up top, so I can select between the tabs. I have main, AI tweaker, advanced, monitor, and boot. Yours might say boot or boot priority. Make sure to find this in your BIOS and then go down. You want to select your boot option number one to be the storage disk, either USB, CD, or DVD that you just got done flashing. So I know mine's a 32 gigabyte USB. So if I look through the list, I should be able to find something that resembles that USB. And here it is right here, my verbatim store and go 1100. It's got about 32 gigs. I know this is the correct one. So I'm going to select storage disk. If you have multiple, avoid selecting the partitions, select the entire disk. So this one's the entire disk. I noticed that by seeing no mention of partitions. Anyways, I'm going to press enter on this. And this should be enough to allow us to boot into our live environment or installer. I'll make one more mention here in BIOS. If you are trying to install Linux, you'll want to make sure that you have your secure boot settings disabled or set to another OS besides Windows, or else your system will keep trying to boot into Windows, regardless of what you have put into your computer. Also, if you can find fast boot on your computer, you might want to disable that one as well if you're having trouble booting into your Linux environment. If you made it this far, please smash that like button for me. Now your system might have actually already selected the first option because there is a timeout for grub. If you do have the screen, 
we'll select the try or install Ubuntu option. Chances are you'll see a screen that says try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu. You can select the install Ubuntu option so that you automatically get this installer page ready to go. Otherwise, if you hit try Ubuntu, you'll be able to test things out before installing. Just know that no data is saved in that live environment. Okay, with the installer up, we'll first select what language we want to use in order to go through the installer. I'm selecting English for myself. You can select whatever you like and hit continue. After that, we select a keyboard layout Select yours, mine's English US, the default, and I will type in something down here in this field just to make sure that my keyboard is properly detected and being used, and then I can hit continue. Next, we have updates and other software. Normal installation is probably what most people want. If you don't want extra stuff like office software and media players, you can go with the minimal installation. I don't suggest this. And down here we have other options which allow you to download updates while installing Ubuntu. Might as well, so you have the latest and greatest in Ubuntu. And below that, you can install third-party software for graphics or Wi-Fi hardware, including additional media formats. So you'll want to do this if you have an NVIDIA graphics card or some Wi-Fi adapters, perhaps newer ones that are not supported natively in Ubuntu. Otherwise, leaving this unchecked is fine. It does warn you that some are proprietary drivers and not open source, in case that makes a difference for you. Either way, the normal installation and downloading updates while installing Ubuntu is fine for me. I'm going to hit continue. Okay, the next portion is saying installation type. Well, since my storage disk has nothing on it currently, I can select erase disk and install Ubuntu. And I suggest most people do this. If you have absolutely nothing on your storage disk, what's going to happen is everything off the selected storage disk will be erased so that Ubuntu can be installed on it. So make sure you have a backup of all your files and data on any disk that you plan on using for Ubuntu and you want to erase what is already on there. So again, most people can go this route, but in order to see what's actually happening, I'm going with the something else option. This way we can create partitions for ourselves and choose how the system looks. I'm gonna hit continue. Now notice I have a storage disk that's completely unformatted currently. I can create a new partition table for the storage disk since it doesn't have anything on it. Otherwise you can delete a particular device if it has a size. That way you clean things up. I'll show you in a moment what I mean. So I'm gonna hit new partition table first and hit continue. This now shows me free space and it shows me the free space of the storage disk that I had selected. If you have multiple, make sure you're selecting the proper one. But for the time being, I'm using this free space right here. First off, I'm gonna select the free space. That's what's available on my storage disk. Right click and hit add and say beginning of the space. Next, I'm going to change this at to be EFI system partition. This is because in order to install this on a UEFI based BIOS system, I'll need an EFI partition at the beginning that will allow us to boot, right? For that, I'm going to actually give around a gigabyte of partition space. That way it's reserved for the EFI system. And then I'm going to hit okay. This is going to do is produce a few things here. Notice that we have around gig of memory reserve EFI type. It has around a gig of memory now. The reason why this got split up is because of the bounds of the storage disk. I won't really worry about megabyte of free space in the front. Not a big deal. Instead, I want to focus on the free space afterwards. So dev SDA1, which is part of the overall disk SDA, now is EFI partition based. Next, I'm going to use this free space to again add some more space. This time, I'm only going to leave around two gigs at the end First, for my swap partition, look up how much you want to use for your own system. This usually has to do with how much physical memory that you have in your system, but there's actually more modern ways of introducing swap space to your computer. So again, I'm just going to do 168.000 for the time being. That way I have a little extra left over at the end. Next, I'm going to select beginning of the space and select the ext for journaling file system. The mounting point is going to be directory and then I'll select OK. Notice now up top we have a green area, orange area, and then this gray area, which is the free space. I have around 2.7 gigs available. I'm going to select add again and now I'm going to change this to area and hit OK. This will give us a swap partition at the end, EFI partition at the beginning, and a root partition in the middle. Again, swap can be created as a swap file instead of using a swap partition. That's the modern way to do it. So you don't necessarily need this third partition on disk SDA. I'm just going with this at the moment. And then make sure that the device for the bootloader installation 
is a selection of the overall disk. So dev SDA for me, not a partition. That should install the bootloader in the proper location at the beginning of the disk. And with this all set up, you'll be ready to go. Now, if you already had a bunch of stuff in a device, let's say you had dev SDA, you can go through and delete the partitions. Just know that as you're deleting things, you will be losing any and all data on that storage disk. So make sure that you want to overwrite that disk with Ubuntu before doing anything like that. Anyways, with dev SDA or whatever device you have selected, I'm going to make sure that the amount of storage on my disk is correct. It says around 172 gigabytes here, dev SDA. I know that's correct for me. Make sure yours is okay too. This will give you a hint at least at what storage disk you have selected. Great. Now, once you know you have the proper one selected, you can hit install. Now it's going to warn you one last time that it's going to make changes to your storage disk. And if you're confident that you've selected everything properly, you can hit continue. Now we're asked what our time zone is. I'll select mine, which I'll put in New York, select whichever one pertains to you and then hit continue. Following that, I'll put in my name and then I'll put in my computer's name. Well, and then I'll put a username in that is Savvy Nick. Two, this computer name is what other computers will see your computer name as. This will be the user you use to log in. So remember the username and the password. Put in a password and confirm that password. Once you've done that, I always select the require my password to log in. Otherwise, anyone can get into your system and then Finally, hit continue. The installation process will now begin. You've gone through all the setup. This can take anywhere between 10 minutes to an hour, depending on your computer. So make sure to check back in a little bit whenever this is all done. A few minutes later. At this point, you're ready to hit the restart now button. What I'll let you know is when hitting restart now, the system will want you to remove the installation media that you just used to install Ubuntu. You'll be given a screen that says, remove the installation media, then hit enter. So you can do so at that point. Otherwise, if you miss it, not a big deal, just shut down the computer, remove the installation media from your computer, start it back up, go to BIOS and confirm that the storage disk where you just installed Ubuntu 22.04 is the first one to boot and continue. You may or may not see this depending on your system, depending on if you hit a key in order to see the grub menu. Otherwise it automatically loads in for you. If you are on here, just select Ubuntu. Use your username and password that you created through the setup to log in. And congratulations if you made it this far, you successfully installed Ubuntu Linux 22.04 on your computer. This is the long-term support edition and we'll go through things real quick. That way you're familiar with your new desktop environment. Connect to your online accounts if you'd like. You can also skip through this. This is just a welcoming screen. Do you want to send information to Canonical, the creators of Ubuntu? No, I don't want to send my information. I'll hit next. Again, for privacy, you can turn on or off location services. Mine's currently off and I'll hit next. Now it says you're ready to go. Install software. Here are some of the most popular ones. We'll do this in a moment. I'll hit done. All right, on the background, you'll notice you have your home directory, which allows you to get information about your home user and get to various things like downloads, documents, music, etc. Next in the top left-hand corner, you have activities, which gives you workspaces that you can work on, a search bar, and that's really it. In the top middle, you have your current time, date, and a calendar with notifications on the left. On the right-hand most side, you have your current volume control, a wired or wireless connection, including settings, power savings, depending on if you have a laptop or desktop computer, you can also get to other settings quickly from here, locking the screen, powering off, logging out, or shutting down things. On the left-hand side, you have a dock, which gives you some pinned favorites, including Firefox web browser here, Thunderbird Mail, Files, a file browser, Rhythmbox for music, LibreOffice, the default word processor, Ubuntu software, help, and the trash bin. Down below, you have show applications, which shows all applications on the system. You can scroll through by swiping or hitting the buttons at the bottom to get between screens and towards the top. You have different workspaces. If you want to go between them, you can. And then again, a search. So the most important thing probably to get you started is the Ubuntu Software Center. Check this out in order to look and download various different packages or applications very easily. Check out additional drivers, which is an app as well that lets you install 
or manage your additional drivers in case you have an NVIDIA graphics card. That's really what I'll leave you with. Congratulations on your newly installed system. You can start using Linux today. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.